I'm delighted to say I'm joined by All Ireland winner Peter Canavan and Sky Sports analyst, of course, as well. Peter, how are you doing? Thanks, yeah, all good. Good, glad to hear it. Are you looking forward to this Mayo against Dublin All Ireland final? Now, we saw two fairly drab semi finals, but two teams that, judging by those games, are the obvious ones that we want here to have a tightly contested final. Indeed, I am. Indeed, I am looking forward to it. Um, a lot of people are concerned already that it's going to be, you know, Dublin are going to win it easy enough again. But how can you disregard? this Mayo team because you only have to look at their previous performances against um, Dublin, be it all Ireland final or all Ireland semi-finals. They perform well, they, they put it up to them and they've come very close different years to, to knocking Dublin off their perch. So from that point of view, I I would say you, you have to show respect to Mayo. Uh, the second thing, it is Mayo and if ever a county, you know, after what, 69 years, deserves to win an all Ireland. it's probably Mayo one wouldn't be, wouldn't it be like it that they win it the year that they don't have any supporters there to see them uh, so that's in the back of my mind as well but I'm a realist and after after the weekend's performances and watching the two teams at, at close hand um, I'd be amazed if, if Dublin don't don't manage six in a row um, very impressed with them and they, they only play it in third year in my opinion yeah, because my, um, my thought when watching the game, Peter, and like you were there as well, was it was one game, the Mayo one was just a seesaw. They could have conceded 10 goals if Tipperary had to knock everything in, whereas the other one was Dublin. It was very systematic, and you know, there, was, there was no ups and downs. It was just throughout a Dublin very consistent performance. So they couldn't have been two more different semi-finals. That's right, but that's, that's Mayo. Mm. Mayo's up, up and down. That's, that's the nature of them in the league. This year, the best performance in the, in throughout all the games post lockdown was probably Mayo against Galway, mm. where, where again superb football a wee but like the weekend every time they went forward they looked like hurting them and scoring goals, and they went out the following week and thrown beat them down in in Castle Bar, so um, and their style of play in those games was similar. Uh, thrown hit them for three goals I think, but Mayo didn't deploy a sweeper. Um, it was all out attack. It was a high press, and they leave themselves open at the back. So that's exactly the way it was against uh, Tipperary, and that's why Tipperary were able to get in. Um, and the other end of it then is when teams do play defensive. Galway played them in in the kind of final. Galway got a lot of players back. They weren't going to concede what they did in the league, and Mayo found it difficult. Um, they brought men out, and it was more a ball carrying game, which they have the players to do as well. Um, but you feel that if they go if they go all out against Dublin, and they leave that sort of space at the back, you're you're asking for trouble. Yeah, because like you you hear different people talk about different approaches. So for example, I've done a few videos with Stephen Poacher, and he's all about you have to sit down, you have to make it a nasty game, you have to slow it up. Whereas I see Mark O'Shea there saying during the week you have to go at them. Now you've obviously managed, you've lots of managerial experience. If you were setting up Mayo, what do you think you'd try and do against Dublin? I think you'd be foolish to try and take Dublin on in a certain style and keep it that style throughout the throughout the game. So, for example, if James and Mayo do decide to go f- with the high press, I think they'll be found, they'll be got it. might work for 10, 15 minutes, but if you leave that space at the back, and especially when Mayo weren't good at se- securing possession or winning their own kickouts, and indeed winning the opposition's kickouts, then there's going to be opportunity to get the ball in. There's one-on-one situations, and Dublin will punish them. So, to answer your question, I think it'll take a, a mixture of styles. There's going to be periods in the game where they're going to have to retreat. They're going to have to sit back um, and maybe defend the numbers. And then there'll be spells of the game where they will say, right, we're going to go for this. We're going to go for the high press or whatever. So, they pick, they've, they've got to pick their, their battles and, and, and pick their fight. The other thing... You know, if you go at Dublin with the one style of play, Dublin can adapt. They, they latch on to that very quickly and, and they'll change. They, they, they're smart footballers on and, and off the field of play. So I, I think you'd be foolish to try and just beat them with the one style that's been tried often enough uh, and no team has, has come up with the one system. So it's, go, it's going to have to be a very clever team, a well-thought-out game plan, and using a mixture mixture of styles. 
Yes, some people talk about this Mayo team being a little bit in transition from some of those old players who, you know, it's probably cruel to call them the nearly men, but a lot of guys who got really close and, you know, with a brilliant Mayo team. And you see this year, Owen McLaughlin's in there, Ryan O'Donoghue's in there, Oshin Mullen, there's probably one or two others I'm not naming. But at the same time, Dublin are bringing in Sean Bugler, Robbie McDade, and they're not really considered a transition team. But both do are changing a little bit and trying to improve is, is the obvious reason why. Yeah, you don't see because Dublin are, are winning. Uh, there's very few have said this is a young Dublin team, and that's the fact of the matter. Um, it is. Um, from James's point of view, at the start of the year, I didn't predict Mayo to win the All Ireland because I didn't think they had had the firepower up front. If you stop Killian, there's not enough coming from other forwards. So, what what James managed to do now, he's played Aidan O'Shea at full forward, more advanced role, a good foil for, for Killian. They now you're capable of getting in long high ball and, and causing problems, which they should do at some stage again Dublin. But uh, the announcement of, of Tommy Conroy onto the stage this year has been su- superb. Um, his movement has, and, and most importantly, his score, and he scored three points in real difficult conditions in a, a, a blanket defence against Galway, still had three points. You got to see him in the open spaces of Croke Park, electrifying player. So he's added a real difference to them. So that they now have a cutting edge up front, which they didn't have. He's rejigged their midfield. They're a more mobile outfit. They're not as physical. Uh, and that has its own problems in terms of securing possession. Tipperary had 26 kickouts and they won 24. So Mayo only won two kickouts. And the majority of those kickouts were, were out long. So you couldn't have seen that happening a couple of years ago, but th- that's a problem. That's a serious problem for, for Mayo moving forward. And as you say, he also has unearthed a couple of uh, new men at the back. And a lot of people during the summer reckon that James would show loyalty to the men that did so well for him, the Colin Boyles, the Keith Higginses, the Shimei O'Shea's. He hasn't. He's shown uh, a lot of respect to the younger men, the men that are there in form, that played well for their clubs. So, and it's you know moving into an all Ireland final for the, for those young lads it's a massive massive step but he, he's showing his, his great confidence in them um but it's a big it's a big ask of them did Aidan O'Shea at full forward works really well against some teams and in other teams well Dublin in particular in the last number of years it hasn't worked brilliantly and Philly McMahon especially had a really good game off Monday and ended up scoring a goal at the other end did is did it stand out to you that when Thomas Gallagher was going in full forward towards the latter end of the game that Philly McMahon was brought in to mark him and, and do you see that that happening again in the final or do you think they wouldn't start McMahon? Um, Galligan, believe it or not, was more or less in full forward for most of the game and was he well used? Absolutely not. And the few balls that were kicked in, Dublin were, were able to, to, to cope with them easily. Um, so there's a couple of things there. The, the quality of the ball in and Whenever it is kicked in, if it's good diagonal ball, if it does break, Dublin, uh, there was about three or four of occasions, they had a three men sprinting back. And as soon as the ball broke, it was always going to break the Dublin man. So Mayo need to have other personnel ready and, and trying to read that break as well if, if they're going to cause problems. I still think it's worth persisting with, but it's again, it's when to do it and it's a quality of the ball. But no matter who's in, if it's Johnny Cooper, if it's Davy Byrne, um, if he does decide to bring Philly on to mark him, Aidan O'Shea is still going to have a serious uh, height advantage over whichever one of those players. And likewise, a high ball into the square with, with Stephen Cluxton, you still fancy Aidan O'Shea to get a hand to it as well. So it's something that, that I think they will try. They'll not play him there the whole game because I think his aerial ability and aerial strength is going to be needed to secure possession from kickouts. So... Again, it's it's very in the styles, and whenever he is in there for whatever short period periods of the game that is, they've got to mature and, and use them and use them well. And if, if Dublin are to win this game, is it because they have so many lads who can win one on ones like Khan, Dean Rock always gets himself in easy scoring positions, Kieran Kilkenny, Brian Fenton, well, you know? Well, the reason why, again, I'm concerned from a male point of view, say if it is uh, an open game and may push up and, and they go man to man break down the two teams player for player mm-hmm. and select each one right who who's got the advantage there you'll be doing well uh 
you know, I did it last night and I ended up, it was 10-5 to Dublin. Mm-hmm. And some of those calls are, are very close calls. Um, but if you go man to man to say, right, even goal, goalkeeper, it's, it's advantage Dublin and then the 14 outfield uh, positions, you find it hard to get seven or eight that you would say definitely advantage Mayo. So that's why you'd be afraid. Yes, Con O'Callan, one to one. Um, I wouldn't fancy being the cornerback or the fullback left to mark him. Kieran Kipchani's in, in the form of his life. Paddy Small, you know, they're all they're all playing well. And on top of that, Shane, I uh, haven't even gone into the subs. There, there's guaranteed there's going to be three or four subs of each team used. And if you measure up those Dublin players to those Mayo players, mm-hmm. you know, is anybody better on the Mayo side than Paul Mannion that's going to come on? Is anybody better in Mayo than Brian Hurd if he comes on? The Philly man, you know, so... Yeah. It's just, it gives you an idea of the enormity of, of the job that, that, that may have to have to do. Mm, absolutely. I know you're a bit pressed for time, but can I ask you just a couple of quick ones? Yeah, Your son, Dara, I don't want you to hype your son or anything like that, but when you saw him scoring that goal against Donegal, it must have been a very proud moment. It was, absolutely. Um, to, to, see, to see him playing for, for the county in, in a championship is, is something else to, to begin with. Um, it's fr- from a parent. Any parent would tell you that it's, it's nerve nerve wracking watching your own play. But uh, he's his own man. He enjoys his football. He's really enjoyed his, his time under Mickey and, and the other fellas have been very good to him. So look, he knows nothing else. He, he loves it and touch wood, he'll he'll keep at it. Yeah. And uh, did you show him that particular finish, or is it just he happens to have the similar neck? Doesn't listen to me, Shane. So uh, doesn't matter what I tell him. He he does his own thing. Uh, so n- not really. I think he's figured that out himself. He's hmm. fast feet like the mother. <laughs> and then just Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar going in. Are you, are you happy with that? And then Mickey going to Mickey Hart going to Loud. Ah, I was. Um, I wasn't surprised that Mickey got back into management. Uh, the swiftness of it, maybe yes, uh, took me back. I thought he would have enjoyed a bit of a break. But you've got to know Mickey to realise that he, he football's in his in his genes in the blood and he knows nothing else. So massive coup for, for Louth and what an impetus they have now to go on and, and to progress and get out of Division 4. Um, so a brilliant appointment from by Peter, Peter Fitzpatrick and, and the Louth County Board. Um, in terms of Fergal and, and Brian, Again, a great appointment from from a throne point of view. Two two men that I know very well, that have that have played with and that have managed with as well, and I would be very confident that throne are in good hands moving forward. Uh, I know that they, they are they are planning away and, and getting a really strong backroom team in, in place, and I think that's well advanced. So I would be very optimistic. I'm I'm looking forward. To seeing how this team progresses let's like any new management coming in they'll have their own ideas that their own way of doing things and it's going to freshen things up for for the players that have been there a few years as well so uh very optimistic and, and looking forward to seeing throwing play in the new year brilliant stuff peter really appreciate you joining me